welcome back to the channel guys in this video i will be showing you how you can manage uh, multi-factor or mfa in microsoft 365 uh, this would also include users in enter id and the traditional uh, admin center mfa settings so yeah let's get started uh, as you can see i'm logged into my tenant here the test tenant uh, with the global admin account and this is where I am currently at. This is called Microsoft 365 Admin Center. I will also go ahead and open the Entra ID portal, which you can visit by clicking on this identity uh, option here. And as you can see, it opened up the Entra Admin Center in the next tab. So let's look at how it was managed or it used to be managed uh, traditionally. Uh, Microsoft is now calling it the legacy MFA method. Uh, so you would go to the admin center, you would go to the active users section here, and then you would just click on multi-factor authentication button here, which would open up a new page uh, where you would manage MFA for, for users. So this is what the, the page looks like. It is very minimalistic, uh, I would say. And it again lists all the users, uh, their username, display name, and the status of their MFA. Uh, and over here, you what you could do is you would select an, a user. Let's uh, let's pick Alex for 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 this video as an example. I'll just click on Alex, and you can just see there is option to enable uh, MFA. So if I hit enable here. It's going to give me, oh, you're going to be this, this, so let's just click on enable. And now Alex MFA method is enabled. If you really want Alex to be using MFA every time he logs in and not being able to sp skip it, you would actually set it to enforce. And again, it gives you a description of what that enforce option means. Uh, so you would just click on enforce. And once the user is in enforce state, uh, it doesn't say enforce here for some reason. Let's just refresh it. Oh, there you go. Alex is now under enforced state. And the user will not be able to skip uh, uh, MFA prompts whenever they log into Microsoft 365 uh, services. So that's how you would do it. Uh, if you look at manage user settings, you can re-require user to uh, set up MFA you can also delete the existing app password you can uh, require user to select uh, other methods but I'm not gonna go deep into this because this is going away and Microsoft is asking everybody to stop using this and instead use uh, the newer way of managing MFA which is through Entra ID portal or Entra admin center so I'm just going to hop in here. If I look under identity and users and click on all users, you would see the same list of all the users which exist in 365. Um, so I am going to go to Alex again over here, sticking with the same user uh, for the video. So I'll open ex uh, Alex's account and you would see there's authentication methods option at the bottom here. Uh, that's where you would go to manage the MFA methods for the user from now on. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you can see there is plus add authentication method. So this is where you would add the method, uh, which can be added by a, by a, by an admin. Uh, keep in mind, Microsoft offers a lot of authentication, different authentication methods which you can learn by just clicking on learn more here uh, this link and I just clicked on it and this is where it takes you to so how it works uh, Microsoft Entra micro uh, multi-factor authentication uh, it will explain what MFA is it's something you know something you have something you are and based on those principles Microsoft has various methods you can use uh, to clear the multi-factor challenge uh, so you can use a microsoft authenticator app you can use authenticator light which i did not know until now uh, so yeah they keep adding more and more uh, there's windows hello uh, 
FIDO keys, Microsoft Authenticator, but you just use the pass key. Certificate based authentication. Uh, I think this is the most secure MFA there is. Um, I would say it's the certificate based and the FIDO key. Those two are the, the securest in my opinion. There is SMS. So I, this video I will just add or demonstrate the MFA by adding a phone number uh, to a user's account uh, which is going to be the SMS method. So yeah, these are all the authentication methods you can use. I'm going to go back to enter ID uh, under Alex account. I'm going to add a phone number. So this, uh, this number could be their cell phone number, uh, which whenever they sign in to, let's say, Outlook on the web and they have MFA enabled, um, they can choose to receive a six digit code on their phone number. And that's what's gonna that's what I'm adding right now so I'll just click on phone number here and it gives you a brief description of what it is it's add a phone number to a user to allow the user to receive one-time use codes via SMS or phone number to use for authentication and self-service password reset so yeah basically they can authenticate uh, by receiving a six-digit code on their phone number uh, so I'm just gonna just just pick a random number uh, it's not going to be really valid so this is this is just random I, I it doesn't exist i hope it doesn't exist but yeah you can you have two options here you actually have three options primary alternative and office so let's say the user doesn't not have a cell or they just don't want to use their cell phone for office things uh, and they have a landline so you can have that f you can add their number here which uh, would be under office and they will receive a phone call with the code from Microsoft so yeah you have all those options here but for this video for simplicity I'm just gonna add it under primary mobile click on add here and it says the provided phone number is formatted properly but is not a valid phone number so there you go it's not a real number um, so let me see if I can just it takes that no so yeah I'm not gonna add my own phone number here but basically you add the phone number of the user and once you hit add here their number will be added Let's see if I I'll, I'll try it one more time. Just picking up a random one which exists. Hmm. Oh, it looks like it worked. So you can see it's showing under authentication method, usable authentication method, and their phone number is visible. So from now on, if Alex tries to log in and the MFA is being enforced, either through conditional access or security default, they will have to they will be receiving a code on this number uh, in order to use uh, Microsoft 365 services. Um, there are other options here which you can use too. Uh, you can reset a password. Keep in mind if you click on reset password here, it's just gonna give you a random password. It will not let you pick a custom password. So I would suggest you doing that here uh, and not from here, okay? Uh, you can require re-register um, of MFA. So let's say the user uh, bought a new phone and their authentication method was Microsoft Authenticator that they set up on their old phone. Uh, so if you want them to get prompted to register again, uh, you just click on this option here you can revoke multi-factor authentication, uh, authentication session. Uh, so let's say user started in the morning, they logged into their office uh, apps, they went through the authentication, but you just want them to get logged out or you want them to be prompted for authentication again, uh, you can just click on re revoke multi-factor authentication se session. So their token will expire on their end and they will have to re-authenticate or go through the MFA process again. 
so yeah that's how you manage the mfa or authentication for multi-factor authentication for a user in uh, microsoft 365 now thanks for watching